Welcome back to my garage. Tonight we are going to drill and epoxy in the tungsten slugs because they have arrived. Yeah, I've put my crank in the in the drill press. I made this uh, um, jig to lift uh, or to just hold it by this web. So I won't compress it and uh, push it out of alignment. And uh, now I'm going to drill the two holes that I or the two uh, marks I made, the center punches I made. I'm going to drill them uh, um, through the first web, and then I'm going to remove this uh, um, jig and re drill through the uh, webs on the other side or the uh, the other webs. Maybe not. Okay, back with a new sharp drill bit, or at least sharp, uh, and with some uh, cutting fluid, because <laughs> it quickly uh, the crank material is harder than I anticipated, and the drill quickly got dull. Right. First hole, or the first pilot hole. And I'll just move on to the, the second one. The punch mark. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Okay, that did not go as planned, uh, but I managed to drill the holes in the crank. Um, the problems I was having was uh, uh, this crank is apparently case hardened. Uh, that's probably uh, normal, uh, but I haven't drilled much uh, many cranks, or I've never drilled a crank for before. So um, and uh, at first I just thought um, I thought my um, drill bit was uh, dull. And I put in a new one, and it worked for a little while. But then, when it was uh, uh, trying to cut through um, the surface uh, on the bottom of the web, it got dull again. And I tried another one, and uh, it too, uh, it, or it, it managed to cut through that surface. But then, when I started uh, on another hole, or the uh, the other hole, it um, it quickly got dull, so or uh, it broke too, and uh, I can try to show you uh, what happened. Okay, so I don't know if you can see it, but the edge you can see where uh, the, the notch in each of the flutes, where the crank, the surface. Of the crank material was actually cutting into the drill bit instead of the other way around. So um, 
Uh, what I did, or what I uh, was thinking about doing, was because uh, I don't have any um, uh, carbide, car carbide, carbide drill bits uh, large enough. Enough. Uh, I was uh, uh, planning to do to use an old trick of uh, sharpening uh, a masonry bit and using that to cut through the surface. But then uh, when I and I didn't have any of those uh, masonry bits, so I went to the store, and then I found this Bosch uh, universal drill bit and it's meant for cutting uh, wood and metal and stone and tiles and uh, and uh, all all the different materials and it has uh, the standard uh, masonry um, uh, tip tungsten tip I think maybe or some other very hard material uh, the difference, uh, or the difference uh, with this bit uh, to the uh, masonry bits, is that this is was already sharp, because it was meant to cut through steel and the other materials. So, out of the box, cut through the case hardened material like butter. The only problem was that it isn't wasn't very uh, good at uh, staying true in the bore and uh, it managed to cut the one of the holes a little bit off center but I think that's uh, that'll be fine as they say so now I'm going to mix up some epoxy and glue in the um, tungsten slugs uh, first I'm going to tape uh, the inside of the webs uh, put in the slugs with epoxy and then just tape the outside too so they don't fall out because I have to lay the crank maybe like this or so. okay so first I'm mixing the epoxy uh, which is actually a super epoxy mixing it together Making sure that it is an even color, and uh, this uh, epoxy, particular epoxy, has worked well for me uh, in as uh, building up, for building up transfers uh, or transfer passages and uh, and the sealing stuff and uh, uh, in engines. So. Uh, I am confident that it will la this will uh, last, as opposed to other epoxies I've used that has fallen off or broken or you know. like that. I'll apply some duct tape to the inside of the crank webs so that the uh, epoxy and the slugs will stay in place. Just use the ruler to push it in place so it doesn't leak out on the back side here. Then we are ready to apply some epoxy in the hole and on one of the slur and once on the slugs. I've got uh, heaps of uh, Allen wrenches because they always come. Uh, when you buy furniture and stuff, especially from IKEA, uh, IKEA, uh, the sets always come with some uh, Allen wrenches. So I can spare, I can sacrifice one for epoxy. So now I'll apply and some in this hole. I think I'll do the other one too. Okay. Then I'll apply some to the slug. I was out of uh, rubber gloves or uh, gloves, so uh, I don't recommend playing with epoxy without gloves. But if you don't have any, and what can you do? At least clean, or at least I will at least clean my hands 
thoroughly when I'm done with this. Do this one too. That's a bit too much. The problem with epoxy is that you can develop allergies or an allergy uh, uh, from or you can become allergic to it if you handle it without gloves which I am doing now so I guess I'll just have to cross my fingers that it won't happen because then you will get a reaction uh, as soon as you are in contact with it typical for both builders Okay, like that. I'll be back when it's cured. So now it's been curing for uh, for 24 hours and it's feel fully cured. It's fully cured. Uh, so now uh, I just need to grind down the excess and uh, we can start the assembly uh, and check the balance factor. So grind it down, uh, recheck the balance factor to see where I've uh, uh, managed to get it, hopefully around 60% and then rebuild. Okay, I'll uh, bring you over to my grinding station or uh, uh, yeah, grinding station. Okay. <laughs> Do this all the time. <laughs> so I said the uh, grinding station, uh, but I think I will just uh, uh, finish this or uh, clean this up with uh, hand files. So let's go. And I'll take you along a little bit of the way and then just finish it off camera because it's not that interesting to watch someone file epoxy so uh, that's uh, the finished product I just smoothed and uh, and filed down the excess expo epoxy, and uh, now I'm going to recheck the balance factor and see um, uh, if uh, I'm close to 60%, which is what I'm looking for. Uh, my scale is acting up a little bit here, so I hope it will work. But anyways. Let's get to it. So I'll start by hanging some weight from the conrod. Also about 11 grams. So that's too light. And I'll throw on bearing. Now we're up to about 22 grams let's see where that gets us okay so it's a little bit too light I think yep I'll throw on some more and I'll stop the convert Okay, looks like we are getting there. It's a tiny bit too light. Throw on some more. It's 
still a little bit too light. A little bit more. I'll do it the other way around so, it's, so that it sits more level. Okay, looks like we are there. Had a bit too light still. Switch it. It's a tiny bit on the heavy side. Let's see if I got if I got something lighter. Okay, that seems to be it. Yep, then we'll check <coughs> the weight of what I put on there. That's 25 grams, and with the piston added, uh, the con rod added in, that's 54 grams. I'll remove this just to check, and it says 28. Oh, that 27 it was 26 before, but that scale isn't too accurate. Okay, let's see what where that gets us. So it was uh, 109 grams reciprocating mass. And we were at 50, let's see here, let's say 26 plus 26, that's uh, 52. So uh, 52 divided by 109, uh, 47. So <laughs> we are uh, still uh, too low, now at 47 or 47.7, 40, uh, so uh, uh, 48 uh, 48 percent balanced so the balance factor is 48 percent so obviously I've uh, calculated something uh, a bit wrong here but anyway we will assemble and try with this balance factor so that's it for this episode um, we managed to rebalance the crank to a little less uh, or lower balance factor, balance factor that uh, than uh, what I originally meant for, uh, and I had obviously um, done something wrong in my measurements, or maybe the tungsten slugs uh, weren't, uh, or the tungsten alloy slugs uh, weren't as dense as uh, real tungsten, because that's uh, what I used in my calculations. Uh, anyway, uh, we're close to 50%, which should be uh, okay and much better than uh, what we had before. So uh, uh, stay tuned for the next episode, which will be uh, the assembly of the engine, reassembly of the engine. And uh, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you. I'll see you next time.